live on this. We're live. Hello, everyone. Let me flip the camera around. We're live, folks, and we can't get the audio to work, so we're going to broadcast Rory's troubleshooting live to add to the expediency. <laughs> oh, thanks. We really appreciate that. I'll do a quick introduction of the, the ARC team. You want to you wanna give a quick introduction, brief historical background, bio, maybe your philosophy as it pertains to life? Sure. Well, I'm Tyler, and I'm one of the engineers on the motor drive team. And uh, uh, my philosophy is make motors spin better. That's my philosophical <laughs> So Tyler did the all the electrical design for this guy, as well as all the software design for this guy. And next we have this gentleman. Hello, I'm David. Not not the trash you, panda. You come back. <clears throat> Want to be on camera. We're going to get our audio fixed here in a second, and we'll be back. Yeah. Um, tell I mean, us about yourself, Dave. Well, I started off with uh, like with a love for brushless motors, but then realized that like trapezoidal BLDC control was terrible and noisy. So I've been on a quest to find someone with the talents and expertise to design a really a really great uh, sine wave motor drive, or they call it field-oriented control. So, and here it is, finally after. Quite a few years. <laughs> Quite a few years. Yeah. Like I've wanted this for like a decade now. So. And how are you involved with uh, Free Fly Robotics, this team, etc.? What's your day-to-day -day role? What do you? What kind of things are you doing, helping with? I like do a lot of mechanical design, like advising. These yep. Days. That's kind of what I do. That's not it. Yeah, it's not it. You help with a lot of algorithm design with Tyler. I do. I do. I I, I test things. I you know if there's an <clears> issue, I kind of dig in and try to help where I can. So. Emotional support. Emotional support. Tyler, sure. uh, Mika Lodge has asked if he can have an Alta 6 or 8 for free because he commented on this YouTube live. What do you think about that? I don't think I can hook you up with that. I'm not sure. Mm. You can check your tab. No. <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> Hugh, what do you have to say? About what part? I don't know. Park is amazing. Yeah. Hugh's, Hugh don't. has been filming on a top secret commercial using an arc powered skateboard and a cinema robot. And it's made him come the closest to smiling that I've seen him in quite a long time. Oh, that might be even closer right there. All right. Uh, and Rory is in charge of our audio. That's his role in the group. Apple screwed everything up by taking the headphone port out. I have an old iPhone. It's working great on Okay, life. moving on to Chris. Chris, what's, uh, what's your role? Making sure that this was all working before we started. Excellent. Daniel, um, talk to us about who you are. Uh, background, philosophy, arc team involvement, preferred lunch, etc. Um, okay, well, I'm Daniel, and <laughs> Love I, you, Daniel. I guess I'm here because I started building drones and stuff when I was a, a young lad, <laughs> and um, just I just like building stuff, so now I'm here building stuff. And Daniel's passions are building stuff and voiceover. Yep, uh, voiceovers are pretty pretty good. <laughs> uh, I've built a scooter that uses ARC and got my paramotor in the works that uses ARC and yeah. Great. That's, that's it. How do you like it so far? Oh, it's fabulous. <laughs> it's like a, it's just a bulletproof motor drive. It's quiet and efficient and it's just it's powerful. Everything, everything I've ever dreamed of. Excellent. Shouts out to Tyler. Thanks. Shout out to Tyler. <laughs> um, Rory, how are we doing? Well, we're still having issues because headphone jacks should be on all phones. I'm, I'm more lo looking for like a, a near-term status update than like a long-term <laughs> Apple critique. Uh, Chris, you want to take over operating this phone so we can dig into... Yeah, you can throw the lens on there. Are you the lens, everybody? Do you want to... Let me grab my movie for you real quick. Oh, that looks dialed. Show some taro, please. Oh, taro. Taro will make an appearance. Taro's over here. Yeah. Actually, you can you can uh, dig in a little bit. Okay. This was, this is a development taro. So this is the free fly taro. Uh, we adapted the arc to it. So if you have a taro, you can. Well, very soon. I don't think we're shipping a taro variant yet, but it'll have the whole adapter plate that you can screw on. Uh, drive goes right on. It's plug and play. You don't have to worry about tuning or software or anything. You just plug it in as it is. Uh, works with the controller that it ships with, and uh, you get much better startup performance, better low speed, 
it's quiet, it doesn't make that annoying sound as it's starting up. Uh, so I can put it on the floor and show you how it does. Yeah. Hey, everybody, just uh, talk extra, extra loud because the mic is not working. All right, here we go. Chris, if you want to just switch to external mic on this too, that's fine. Uh, if people can't hear what we're saying, make sure you comment so we know to be louder. Okay, okay so this is the tarot. Uh, if you have seen one of these or have one, you know when you start, you get terrible noises and it kind of jumps. Um, so now you can go really slow. Uh, it'll do this up hills and everything. So it opens up a lot more, uh, a lot more potential to use this and in productions that were previously not possible. Silent mode. Can you control the little phone movie with an RC controller? <laughs> hmm. That's a question. With an RC controller? Yeah. I don't think that. Not yet. Uh oh. He's getting crazy now. Uh oh. <laughs> so if you, you turn the cameras on, he goes into marketing <laughs> mode. <laughs> uh, to Topher, you cannot control the little phone Moby with an RC controller, but we are about to release an API for that, so you'll be able to control it with all different kinds of things. So you could potentially control it with an RC controller after that. Need some help? Can you reach it in? Yep. <clears throat> Is it working? Let's just confirm as we change here. Move it. Sorry, guys. Quick, quick infield repair. Is audio still working? Can you? Anybody talk? Hey, I, I can talk. Audio working? Is it going? Yep. You can all hear? Levels are a little low, but it's fine. A little low? Okay, cool. Excellent. There we are. Is it? Is the gain up on that? Are we good? There's no gain. It's up. passive. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's start at the beginning. Uh, Here we are. Let's pretend that the hardware worked from the beginning and let's go over what uh, what we wanted to cover with ARP 200 today. So <clears throat> Dave, I thought we'd start um, kind of how you and I got connected way back in the beginning, how this love for brushless motors and speed controllers has kind of powered everything that we did for the last decade. Um, so for those people who are not familiar with FreeFly, our normal day job is building awesome devices for the cinema industry to help people move cameras in completely new ways. And along the way, we had to figure out a lot of different things from sensors to brushless motors to motor drives. And originally about 10 years ago, Dave and I started talking. Come this way, dude. Come with me. We started talking and became friends because I was working as an aerial cinematographer in the film industry. I met Hugh, the guy behind the camera, uh, flying big helicopters like this uh, with huge camera packages. And I was on a quest to find a more powerful setup so that I could fly bigger and bigger cameras, bigger and bigger lenses. And Dave at the time was running a custom brushless motor company called Xera, and I found him on the internet, and we immediately became nerd friends. And <laughs> internet dating works. Internet dating, uh, <laughs> internet dating for co-founders. and started making stuff about 10 years ago and I would go on these crazy film jobs with Hugh and nothing would work and I'd come back and I'd have a list and I'd be like, Dave, this didn't work, this didn't work, this didn't work, this didn't work, this was real annoying, I almost committed suicide when this thing failed mm. and he'd be like, oh, we could fix that, we could fix that, we could fix that and so we just went to work fixing it um, and back then, you know, we couldn't really do much, it was just two dingbats in my mom's garage mm. but over time, added people like Tyler and, you know, other smart electrical engineers, software engineers and our skills have expanded such that we've built all different kinds of cool motors, um, motor drives, sensors, gimbals, you know, stabilizers, all kinds of interesting things. And the, the goal now with FreeFly Robotics is to take some of these dev blocks or these like component subsystems and offer them for people to use in their own projects. And ARC 200 is our first product in that line. Uh, it's a universal motor drive. It works on just about everything. Tyler, motors, yeah. Tyler will be like, disclaimer, does not work on these things, but uh, we'll give you a quick overview on, on that and dig into some of the details. Why did you originally get interested in brushless motors? 
the RC airplanes? Uh, yeah, I mean, I saw the the trend going there. I always had brushed motors and like RC cars when I was a kid, and they were horrible. They would shoot sparks out the side. They would wear out. They were just terrible in every way. And then I heard about these things called brushless motors. So I was like, oh yeah, the brushes are terrible. Yeah. Let's get rid of them. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so originally you're rewinding like CD-ROM motors. Yes, yeah. the CD-ROM motors and tiny so little park flyers with. Yeah. Uh, what is it, a, like the Jetty speed, six amp speed control? Yep. The first brushless speed control for model planes and little cocam lithium polymer cells. Yeah. With no balancing. Oh no, I almost, just, bur I almost yeah. burnt down my mom's car with one of those. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but it was super exciting. That was like right on the leading edge back then. Like, it uh, was an amazing time in this industry when lithium batteries start, first started to hit the scene, brushless motors started taking off, higher it was power. Incredible. So it was just yeah. like, you know, these, these systems that could only fly for like two minutes, all of a sudden could fly for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 40 minutes, minutes hour, yeah. Like, I remember I had a GWS slow stick, and oh, it could so fly great. for like three minutes with NICAD. And then you got lithium on there, and weight went down, flight time went up to like just It incredible. was like a whole, I mean, it was like a whole new hobby at that point. So I think that was the moment with which Dave became obsessed with uh, motor drives. Mm -hmm. And that was 10 years ago, and I think it's consumed probably two hours of his day every single day since and so this is a monumental thing to be releasing our first universal motor drive it's kind of got you know 10 years of his thinking wrapped up in it probably three or four years of Tyler's thinking wrapped up in it I've spent no fewer than 15,000 minutes arguing with Tyler over this so this is just a huge thing for everybody um, I want to start just going over some of the accessories uh, that are available for our team. so to begin with, we have a flying lead cable, which will allow you, actually, let's just start with the arc first. You wanna explain? You wanna? Sure. You know more than me. So these are the three phase wires, of course, that go to the motor. They're eight millimeter bullet connectors. That's an odd choice. Why did we choose eight millimeter? It's a high power connector that can do about the 200 amps, a fairly industry standard for hobby. And, uh, if you have a smaller motor, you can buy or make adapters easily. So go on Hobby King, you can get 8mm bullets easily. Uh, and then these are the four signal wires. So they're labeled on here what they are. There's encoder, PWM, USB, and throttle. There's a number of other things on those, but that's kind of the high level functionality. So say you want to have a, an analog throttle and encoders, then you'd get two of these cables. And then on our website, it tells you the pin out for each of these and the, the color code for what's in the wire. So you just strip this back and hook your analog throttle in, hook in the hall sensors. Um, if you want to use sensors, this is really good at sensorless too. So see if you feel you need sensors. Uh, so I strongly kind of, advise skipping the sensors if you're yeah. doing a skateboard. <laughs> They're a pain. Yeah, just skip them. The sensor list is so good that it just goes straight that way. Yep. So that's what this is, just for general hookup, getting your system going. This one is for a PWM. So we specifically made this for the Taro. It's the right length and everything. But if you have any PWM input coming from, that would come from a typical like, radio. Uh, Something like an RC car is usually going to use this for PWM. A lot, of, a lot of the skateboard controllers too are just yep. using PWM, so it works great for that. So then you don't have to deal with the flying lead cutting and splicing. We made that one just ready to go for PWM. Dave, do you want to talk about uh, mechanical design? Like any of the you know, thought process designing sure, yeah. or maybe the assembly technique? This is a this is a bare arc, so people can see yeah, what I it mean, looks like. The challenge was we wanted to make it you know, as waterproof as possible. So uh, we have uh, like a little labyrinth seal around the outside of the case. It's two, they're machined aluminum case halves. So uh, it's, it's pretty high quality and very tough. Um, and then uh, it's not shown here, but we have sill pad, like thermal pad that goes on the side to conduct the, uh, the heat out of the fets that are on this side of the drive. So to the case, so you can mount, uh, mount it to anything conduct, like thermally conductive or put a heat sink on it so that uh, you can get the full 200 amps out of the drive. So, but um, yeah, we tried to make it as compact as possible. It's, I mean, it's of course very high power, but still super small. This is, you know, many drives that are like four times the size don't have the current current capacity. So um, I'm real proud of that. Um, it has tons and tons of IO. So we had to make kind of a fancy uh, grommet on the output that can still seal around all the wires and provide the uh, huge number of I.O. that it has, which you can look at the wiki to see just what it can do. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of options, so. Yeah, I'm proud of the overmolded connectors. 
uh, we almost wimped out and didn't do nice over molded yeah. connectors, but then we <laughs> we got it together and did them, and now that we have them, it's super nice. And then you guys have run this underwater, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. you say it's waterproof? Pretty close. We, uh, That's even, as close to a guarantee as you can it, get with this it's guy. It's officially water resistant, but we have tested it in waterproof conditions. We tried to boil a cup of water with it, so while running it, it's <laughs> difficult to boil water, though. Believe it or not. Yeah. Um, so philosophy of Arc 200. I think Dave touched on it. It's just you know everything we do because it flies or is carried by a human. We try and make it as small, as light, as compact, and as fun to use as possible and I think that kind of design spirit is carried over uh, into ARC 200 you know you can tell from looking at the case design Dave sweated all the details to make sure it's that it's as light as possible yeah. it's always about one gram as far as I can tell. <laughs> also a thing I forgot to mention is we have mounting on for both sides yeah so one side is the hot side so that's the side that you want to like use for heat sinking um, but so if you want to mount it like to the side of an electric bike or, you know, something that has substantial aluminum surface, you want to mount that side down with thermal paste. Um, but then if you have like an RC plane or something like that, uh, which is made from foam or balsa wood or something that's not very thermally conductive, you can mount that side up and let airflow, you know, go across that surface. So it's, it, it is as universal as we could figure out how to make it. So, yeah. So. I want to talk for a second just about uh, roadmap, like where we've come from in motor drives, and then Tyler will dig into where we're headed in the future, the future and the far future. Um, you want to, you guys should talk through all the drives that we've made. Uh, you can kind of see one of you guys, Tyler probably. Yeah, uh, so this specific. is a gimbal drive from the M5, M10, M15. Uh, then this is the drive that we're using in the Moby phone gimbal, the Cinema Robot. Uh, so these are just a few amps each, and then kind of moving up into more modern can products. You, can you tell like an anecdote from each of these eras? Maybe something that was particularly like a huge failure we experienced or something like a, you know, t a test that went amok or something, something that... Encoders. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a story from this one? Uh, I think that one was pretty, maybe our most like Problem-free drive. <laughs> yeah. yeah, amazingly. It was. It's a stack of three of these. This is just one blade. It's like uh, three blades went in for the pitch, you know, roll and pan. Uh, so, yeah, it went in a cool little, cool little uh, extruded aluminum enclosure. For those of you who never worked around motor drive development, it's awesome because they explode all the time, and all kinds of exciting things are happening, and things are going wrong in ways that you could never ever predict or even, you know. It seems Massive like flames. Each, each day there's some, there's some instance in which Tyler states that there's a problem that can never be solved and will never be solved and then, you know, scant four hours later has solved it. So <laughs> it's a wild ass ride. <laughs> uh, and then this is the Moby Pro ESC. So it's a little higher power than the old one since we have higher torque motors in those. Uh, and then this is the Alta ESC motor drive. So that does up to about 90 amp peak. So that was, at the time, our most powerful drive, kind of the beginning of Freefly getting into higher amperage, high power drives. Talk about, like, one thing that's particularly impressive with this is the amount of testing that happened before we le released the production on that. Yeah, so being a flying vehicle that we were releasing as a ready-to-go product, we had to be really careful on the ESC because if you lose a motor in flight, in most cases, it's going to be catastrophic or at least really hard to recover from. So this went through basically months of testing time. We went through all the tests in thermal chambers, uh, ran it at below the lowest temperature rating, above the highest, making sure that the motor's never gonna stop spinning. So possibly the most reliable motor drive from a testing standpoint. So a lot went into really making that a robust product. Uh, and then here we have, uh, this is sort of the first universal motor drive that we made. This is a really high power drive. It was rated and tested at 400 amps. So we put copper bus bar and everything on the back. Uh, this is kind of a retired internal product at this point that was not released, but it was kind of learning and uh, fully functional. Getting into the, mm -hmm. the universal product, more of a prototype. And this ran the first version of our motor drive software? Yep. Yeah, nice. And then, and then there was this. 
Mrs. Ark. Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. You know when it gets laser engraved, it's for real. Yeah, we just did that this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's talk about products that would be suitable candidates for ARC. You want questions or? Yeah, we can run through some questions. Yeah, yeah. you want to do it? You want me to do it? You can do it. Okay. Um, camera seems a little shaky. If only there, there were a way to keep the camera steady. I figured that's directed at you, Bell. Uh, no, you cannot. Hugh, <laughs> Hugh, show us your deep action trailer voice. Deep action trailer you know, voice? Like movie trailer. In a world. In where world. scooters go slow and are uninspiring. There you go, you had it. <laughs> uh, I talked about that one. Are you going to be at Photokina? I don't know what Photokina is, so probably not. Um, would you be insane enough to try doing a drone to handheld Moby continuous transition shot? We've already done that. It's awesome <laughs> and also terrifying. Damn, you guys make your own speed controllers. Damn, that's, yeah, that's true, damn. Uh, <laughs> Would I be able to configure this into existing controllers for a Movi? Like, if I put a motor on a jib arm, could I control the arm and Movi at the same time? Yeah, I think depending on what kind of motors you're using for the jib, you certainly could. But you're going to need to be uh, a pretty Larry McConkey type of dude to figure it out. So mm -hmm. it could be done for sure. Could I use this on a winch on a drone to drop stuff from it? Do you work for Amazon? Would be my first question. Uh, are the newer designs a circle because they attach to the back of motors? Yeah, that's exactly right. I think, right? For, for no these, other reason for a circle drive? For these three, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think that's all the questions, unless you have others. No. Nope. Okay. Uh, let's show some of the things that we use ARC on day to day. Like skateboards, scooters, cars. Yeah. Sort of scooter? Yeah, scooters. So we have, uh, these are four scooters. They, uh, all have arcs in them, so um, yeah, we converted over some older like folding scooters. You can't can't buy them any longer, um, but they're super sweet scooters. They're very fast. Uh, they got these go like 35 miles an hour with uh, some Dewalt power tool batteries on the back, so you can just take the battery out and uh, put it in, and then uh, go cruising around. Yeah, so we ride these all the time here, like literally all the time. Take them to the local local bars so yeah should we uh should we ride it around yeah give it a demo all right so oh boy there we go oh, daniel oh, daniel's yeah. on one now Yeah, you guys race for a second, and then we'll talk about how we built this. <laughs> Your questions? Yeah, uh, Demeter, uh, ARC does support feedback from encoders. Okay. All right, let's bring, bring this guy over here. Let's set it up on the table. You can, if you want see any questions you want to answer too. Can we set it up here? The scooter? Yeah, sure. I thought we'd just talk through if people want to understand how to uh, convert a scooter such as this. You want to grab yours too, Daniel? Sure. Like as a... It's an even jankier edition. Um, so just a quick rundown of how Dave did this. He bought a weed eater, right? Weed eater? Yeah, Blower? Dewalt, uh, Dewalt, Dewalt, Dewalt weed eater. eater. Band saw it off here, attached Literally. it to the scooter. Yeah. He grabbed a motor that is from power steering. It's Original a power, or power steering? Yeah, power steering motor, brushless motors. Did, um, did a little bit of magic lathe, lathing on the, sh the shaft of that, you know, put a, put a pinion on there. Um, Added the, this is a stock belt and pulley, right? Yeah, stock belt. Everything on the rear end is stock. And then there's a nice uh, enclosure underneath here where we installed arc, wired it up. And you can um, see the uh, mounting holes for the arc here. I just tapped through the, the little foot kick plate here. Did you connect it to just existing throttle? Uh, or did you add a new throttle? I added a new throttle. They're like, you know, 
just five dollar throttles. They're super, super uh, low cost. They're ultra reliable hall sensor throttles. Yeah, you got this um, nice navigation. I have, I have a yeah. It's great. Cup holder. Cup. The the uh, bottle holder. Yeah, the cup holder is is really required at this point. And so. With the Dewalt battery, what kind of power levels are you getting on the scooter? Uh, so it is limited. Right now it's limited by the battery because the battery has a 50 amp fuse in it. So I think we get, you know, maybe a little under two kilowatts, something like that, one and a half kilowatts of power. So, um, which is for a scooter that's this light, it only weighs like uh, 45 pounds. It, it, it's pretty fast. Yeah. And, um, and the arc, the 200 amps phase current on the arc, it will still hit that even with 50 amps on the battery. So you can still go up very steep hills with it. Um, so it's a it's a power power limited basically by the battery. So every time we let somebody externally ride these, I cross my fingers and hope that they don't die because they're so fast, <laughs> so powerful. All right, so this is like a gentleman scooter, and then we have <laughs> this thing, which is Daniel yeah, Riley's contraption. Yeah. You want to talk through this, baby? It started its life as just a stock little Razor scooter, and it had a terrible brushed motor and two lead acid batteries in it, and it went like, I don't know, three miles an hour, and <laughs> it was just, it was noisy, it was just the worst. Like, you wouldn't want to buy that for your kid. So <laughs> no, you I wouldn't. took all that crap out of there, and I 3D printed this belt pulley and then put this giant brushless motor on the bottom with some some old uh, Alta flight packs that tab crashed. Oh my god! I put, oh, them, hey. <laughs> I put them under the deck, and now it. I like throwing it. Oh no! Just a drive-by shooting. Yeah. <laughs> now it uh, now it pulls like eight kilowatts, and it's like I'm printing a new gear, so it's gonna have a different gear ratio, and hopefully go like. 45 or 50 miles an hour <laughs> on a and razor scooter. I'm gonna, yeah, oh well, geez, it's gonna be so fast. It's pretty fun. <laughs> Everyone should be building these things. Daniel, what if we bought like a generator that you could tow behind and sent oh, you on a yeah. nationwide journey? Well, uh, to introduce ARC to all yeah. the new markets. So we send well, them around the country on this. Absolutely, I so love it. I already have this, this box that I set right here, and I can put four additional batteries <laughs> in it. And Can I someone get the box? Chris, will you grab the box? I rode it from Woodenville all the way over to Green Lake near Seattle. And Nobody was like, knows what those two places oh, are. It was like 20, 25 miles um, round trip, and it was it was great. I just want to show sleep. Daniel's battery box. So when you see <laughs> Daniel commuting to work in the morning, it's he has like two or three or four huge lithium batteries piled in this box. High end, it's 3D printed. Just. Yeah. Yeah. Going like 40 miles an hour, mouth agape, seven mosquitoes <laughs> in his mouth. <laughs> Just amazing. It takes me like 10 minutes to get to work on this thing. It's, it's the best commuting vehicle. <laughs> All right, let's talk uh, Taro. We talked Taro already. Yeah. Just in, just in case anyone missed that in the beginning, let's just drive it around real quick. So we have this little car that we put a gimbal on top of, um, and we've retrofitted it with ARC. And now the startup and low speed performance is really, really good, which is super nice for for uh, camera use because you can do really, really slow moves, really precise moves, and it's also super powerful. Uh -oh. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> okay, let's just. Uh, engineering Hulk, do you want to cut the Bartzel real quick? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is kind of the last of the demo vehicles that we have to show. Hold on, hold on. Don't, it's not going straight into driving. We need a little bit of background on this baby. Oh, Talk to oh, us boy. about how, how you thought of this, how you built it, <laughs> how long it took. Kind of, it'd be nice for people to understand your design and build philosophy. Um, I'm really a fan of vehicles that try and kill you. So I wanted something that like had no coefficient of friction on your butt, so that you could take corners and worry about falling off. You gotta use the clinch method. <laughs> exactly. And I wanted something with a high center of gravity so that you're likely to roll. The, the, uh, <laughs> the goal of this was actually to uh, I wanted to write some software to do an IMU stabilized wheelie so you could floor it and go into a wheelie and 
But it turns out that's very scary, even. <laughs> I have spent a fair amount of time wheeling this vehicle, and it is terrifying. Yeah. Um, so then this happened. It's kind of janky all around. I, uh, <laughs> I broke both front wheels. They used to have disc brakes on them. They don't have brakes anymore. So we're Did you build this in like one day, though? Uh, I built it in one day. A couple times stretched over a little <laughs> <laughs> one day stretched over a few months yeah yeah i yep. built and rebuilt it three times in one day yep it's got a it's got a corona holder it's got a trailer hitch it's got a trailer hitch oh a trailer what's hitch. the name of this beauty uh this you should come around back and take a look at the uh why don't you like majestically drive away as he grabs that shot Oh God, God help us. No brakes. No Watch brakes, out. I know. Don't get run over, comes. Daniel. <laughs> oh, <thank you. laughs> no, hold on, stop for a second, Ethan. I just want to show the arc itself. We've got, uh, he's got two motors, two arcs. He's running off a A123 battery, I think, right? A123? Yep. Yeah. What's the voltage? Uh, 40, 43, it's 12S. 12S A123. Beautiful chain drive. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It goes though. If you're ever in or around Woodenville and you hear a screeching, it's probably these two. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's terrifying. It's so fast. Okay, I think let's do a quick run through of uh, how to set. Okay. Oh, I'm crying. How often do you want to do questions? Just once. Oh, do you want to run through some? Yeah, let's. We can run through some. Just to keep like. Who else has any questions? Like Sutton had one. Uh, will you ever give the blueprints of how to do scooters? Yeah, Daniel's shooting a nice video on how to install on a skateboard. Um, so that'll be published sometime in the next couple weeks. That should be pretty fun. Michael Sutton, will this work with non-lipo batteries? Can you use incremental encoders, absolute, or both? Yeah, it'll work with any voltage source, it doesn't matter. Um, incremental incremental encoders, absolute, or both? Absolute, definitely, incremental. Incremental is not super great on these. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Okay. Absolutely, definitely. They'll do a hall sensor, and then we support a, an AMS magnetic absolute encoder for really high resolution. Yes, 48. Yeah. Is the stool frame custom? Yeah, that's custom Ethan design. So Ethan design well put together. Hundred percent. Like I don't think the guy did any CAD or anything. He no. just went to the shop and started cutting seal and welding it, and then that thing appeared. A scan twelve hours later. Amazing. Uh, okay, let's run through the goodies. Yeah. You getting this guy right out of the way? Is there a? We don't. Okay. Okay. So this is the uh, motor drive GUI that we ship with it, and this is hooked up to the skateboard right now. So I'll just kind of go through the features of this real quick. And right now it only works on PC. Potentially yep. in the future, Bluetooth, iPhone, Android app, but for now just this. And you can do either USB or if your computer has Bluetooth low energy, then you can connect wirelessly to the drive already through the uh, through the Windows program. Uh, so this is the configuration tab. If uh, These are all the tuning parameters where you can set up for the motor, set up for your battery, set all the current limits, speed limits, what mode you want to run in. Uh, and these are all documented on the wiki, what all these parameters mean. So if you haven't worked with motor drives before, you can uh, read through that and figure out what these do. The good news is about 90% of them you can ignore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when you're first getting uh, set up with the drive, we have this auto-tune wizard that we assume a new user doesn't necessarily want to read through 100 parameters and what they mean. So this is a step-by-step -step guide. I'm not going to run through it all right now, but these all come up with pop-ups that automatically measure things like how many pole pairs you have, the motor's resistance, the inductance. Uh, it tunes the current loop for you, figures out the KV or the, the speed constant of the motor. And then when you're done with that, it, it's all tuned up through torque mode, which is usually what you use on an EV that sort of emulates the control like you get in a car with a gas pedal. 
and then all that's left is uh, setting up current limits and battery limits and such. So uh, don't look at that. Uh, so you can uh, set things like your battery draw limit, your peak phase current, and it has these graphs that show what that means. Uh, so in this case, like the battery limit, as your speed goes up, it's, it's uh, phase limited for a while, and then you run into a battery limit, so you lose some current to keep the battery from blowing out. So it's configurable for all those sorts of things. Uh, we have this telemetry page. So this shows your voltages, the current command, measured current, all the phase currents, uh, speeds, voltage magnitude, the phase. And uh, you can plot all these things over on the graph. So if you want to look at things in real time, watch as you command current, this would go up. And uh, you can also log this to a CSV file. So if you want to get a long span, look back at statistics and such. Uh, and then we have this function generator tab. So like, we have this on the, the skateboard right now, so I can just put in a speed. This is set in speed mode right now. So that's good for just a quick lab test before you switch over to something like hand control. You just control it from the computer. Uh, and then finally, there's a flash chip in the drive. So uh, it's constantly logging data and you can come in and download any of these logs and that just gives you a CSV of the file. So if you're having issues or uh, something's not working right or something breaks down, then you can go in and get the log later and hopefully figure out what's going on with it. And, fix that issue. So that's pretty much the, the functions of the interface. I think it probably will take, you know, a reasonably competent user about 30 minutes to set up their first motor. Mm -hmm. the, the, this GUI's gotten quite a bit better since I first used it, but I was able to get a motor up and running the first time without... Um, Me too. Of, you too? Were you? Yeah. Excellent. That's a poster. Crash Panda. Crash Panda. Set up, a, set up a motor first try. Uh, all right. Next <laughs> questions and answer. I don't. I just looked through all the questions and answer. I didn't see anything. Um, what you can expect from us in the near future, we're going to publish a video on how to build a scooter such as this. We'll publish a video on how to set this up with uh, set it up for a skateboard, electric skateboard. We're going to be sending out a variety of demo units to kind of people in the industry to get feedback and get them testing it. Um, if you want to try this thing, shoot us a message, and if your application is sufficiently interesting, maybe we'll send you one to demo. Mm -hmm. um, what else? What else do we want to touch on? Hmm. I don't know. I, I just, I guess, just that we're like super dedicated to this, and we're going to keep building more drives, different drives for different applications, like bigger ones, smaller ones. So, yeah, I think what we're discussing right now potentially doing a a higher voltage, higher amperage drive, something maybe in the 400 amp range. So mm -hmm. if you have particular use cases that you think um, are interesting and you want us to know about, make sure you let us know before Tyler gets too deep in the design. It usually yeah. takes him three to five days to design a drive, so <laughs> if you can get that feedback in very quickly, that'd be great. Uh, yeah. Anything else you want to touch on? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, just super excited. And we're going to get these in more and more applications that, uh, you know, that people are interested in so yeah. question here no no <laughs> <laughs> all right thanks everybody for tuning in uh we'll do another one in the near future after we get a couple videos published Bye -bye. all right thanks guys